In this video, I'm going to get started working with the pen tool to create this portrait. So step one, I'm going to apply a black stroke and I'm going to turn off the fill. I'm going to actually begin with the shape of the hair and then I'll move on to the overall shape of the face. So I begin with the hair. I come, I grab my pen tool and I begin to click and move around and what we'll find some of these shapes are curved and some are not so curved. So I start to move around the shape of the hair pulling out my handles where I need to do so. As I come on down, holding down Option or Alt to move around. Again, every time I need to change the overall direction, I am using Option or the Alt key. Okay, so we come on in, we add our color. From here, we can come back and we can start to look at the shapes that are highlights coming in, creating closed paths, using the black outline so we can see where it is we're going, applying our color. Moving on to the shape of the face, moving through, getting an overall color, overall shape, and adding our color. Now, turning that off, coming and getting the larger shapes, our eyebrows. Moving on to the eyes, looking at all of the different shapes that are in on the eyes. And as we start to come in, always focusing in on our layers, turning different layers off, turning layers on as we move through. And probably this video right here, maybe I have about five to six different shapes to define the eyes. Now, I did create my color palette for this image, but a lot of times I'm actually working from the eyedropper tool, which is also a really powerful way to get our colors. Moving into the next eye, again, coming on in, seeing where my shapes are landing on my layers, sometimes using object arrange, send backwards, send to back, getting these colors in, and eventually just coming in and really focusing in on the highlights and the shadows. Those highlights and shadows are what really define the form of this face. Moving in, zooming out, looking at the structure, getting a sense of where things are needed. Again, so as I start moving through, where my focus really is right now are on the shadows, getting these areas where there are these darker shadows. Again, as I said earlier, I am using the eyedropper, but I could also just use the shadow that I applied that when I defined my color palette. Okay, deciding to continue to move and into these different regions, defining these various areas. These shadows up in here really defining the squinch and the expression that is on this face. Moving on through, again, working with my um, pulling out handles and often also coming on in and using the option or the alt key. Okay, moving on to the teeth, choosing an overall color, coming in, focusing, really finding where the shadows are. Uh, now I've chosen to really use the eyedropper and introduce some other colors. One of the biggest mistakes we make when doing teeth is we think that they're this white when really um, teeth have shadows and all kinds of things that are happening on them. So as we look at these teeth being defined, the ones that are further back in the mouth are darker. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's a shadow being cast on these teeth um, because they are deeper in the mouth. Moving through, turning layers on and off. I'll often actually lock layers as well. And as I'm working through this project, you'll see that I've created different layers. Now, when we think about the layers, we always want to remember that whatever is under is literally underneath something. Again, coming in, defining this area in here, object arrange, send it back. Now those teeth are in the front. Turning on the face getting the highlights of those lips to really define the structure of the lip. And there we have it, getting these bottom teeth, which are much more in a shadow as well. Turning on and off, zooming out, 
every so often too, turning off the actual image. Coming in to define the structure of the ears. Getting the highlights, the shadows. Actually, I'm focusing in on all of the shadows to begin to really define the structure of this face. So we move on through. So we can see that, you know, there are so many different possibilities and that each portrait that we do will have its own set of issues, its own set of colors of light and dark. And as we're defining and working on these portraits, we always want to think about the highlights, the local color, and then the highlights and the shadows coming in, defining part of the neck in here and really starting to see that this image is coming together. Starting to think about how I'm going to create the clothing. Okay, so we keep working and we move on to define the fabric and also make decisions about the background. Again, what we wanna think as we define these larger shapes moving through with our pen tool is the overall color and then from there, coming in and defining some of the shadows and highlights if we'd like to as well. Now, another big piece is the order of the layer, the order of the objects that are on the page. At this point too, it's a good idea to maybe pick a background color, work on the shirt, define some of these major shapes, and we can really add as much detail as we'd like to. So ha having the overall structure and seeing where we land. Now, ending this project, as we come on in, we want to really spend a little bit of time and look at some of the highlights. So coming in, defining the highlight on the side of the face, a highlight on the nose, adding in the color, and then coming on in, and sometimes if the highlights are too much, lowering the opacity of the highlight until we have a finished product.